so that is putting them in. And now to adjust the cables. Okay, so this is your servo motor. And what the manual says is to just pull them both off of the drum there. Probably go in and tighten up your, your cable retainers just to make sure you're at the right compression, tension. That way everything's set up right. You don't have to worry about it moving at all. Okay, so what you do is you pop this retainer off. So this retainer just pops off. I've had these break before, so just be careful. All right, so the instructions say to measure from the bottom of the retainer, that lead piece, to the tip of the cable sheath. And that is supposed to be for a 600cc twin. I'll go through all three of or all, everything I got here. For the 500cc models, uh, you should be right around 35 with no less than 34.1 millimeters and no more than 36.1. The 600 twin like this one is, uh, should be around 33 with a minimum of 32.1 and a maximum of 34.1. 800 cc twin is 30.6 for where they should be with a minimum of no less than 29.6 millimeters and no more than 31.6 600 cc triples with apv should be around 35.4 with no less than 34.4 millimeters and no more than 34 36.4 millimeters rather so it says the measurements must be equal and within specification from the chart. If the measurements are within specifications, no adjustment is necessary. If they are not within specifications, uh, it says to loosen the jam nut on the cable to, adjust, to be adjusted, then loosen or then using the adjusting nuts, lengthen or shorten the housing as needed to get the proper measurement. So, we're just going to stick to the millimeters for a 600 twin should be right around 31. I want to make sure that you take up any slack. All right. So you want to pull. Make sure that you have all the slack out of the housing. Thirty-one point eight seven, so I'm a couple millimeters, about a millimeter and a half short. So it looks like a five sixteenths and ten millimeter. Ten. Just break it loose. Measure it again. Thirty-three point thirty-three point nine seven. So I want to be at thirty-three point one. 
So I'm going to screw that in a little bit more. Again. No, screwed out. Let's try that. I'm going to pull the slack out. Thirty-three point seven three. Pull the slack out. Thirty-three point four. We're going for 33 point one. 33. I'll do that. 33 is good to me. And you want to lock that in. There's one. Now we'll get this other one out of here and see where it's at. All right, moves freely. That's the other thing you want to do is check and make sure that it moves freely. All right, so we have all the slack out of this one. at 30.47 so we're too short So we're too short, so we're going to have to screw this in. Let's see where we're at. Pulling the cable, make sure you got all the slack out.
close. Real close. So I'll go ahead and twist it in a little more. That should be right on the money. We want 33. Almost done. Pull that slack out. Thirty three point oh seven. Good to me. Let's tighten her up. Right on the money. So that's it, folks. It's not very difficult. But obviously it can seem intimidating if you haven't done it. But that's why manuals are so helpful. Okay. Now these only slide in one at a time. So if you look at it as this is the front of the engine, then you'll put the far side or the PT, PTO side on or in first. And it just slides all the way over. I don't want to do that right now. And same thing with the other one. So one of these is longer, so you want the longer one to be on the outside.
to take your clip. Once these are fully seated, just like that. And now you, you'll know if your servo is good because it'll when you start the sled up, it'll cycle once. And what happens is the CDI box will detect the voltage. And if the voltage is proper, then it's fine. It'll just cycle once. Now if it cycles, if the if the CDI detects an improper voltage, what'll happen is it'll cycle two more times for a total of three cycles. And when I say cycle, it'll open the valves all the way up and close them. And the manual says that when it opens up, it, the reason that it opens up the first time, obviously, is to detect the proper voltage, but it also is a cleaning process. If there's any carbon deposits, opening them all the way up like that, when it first starts up, It'll open up real quick and then it'll drop any carbon deposits down into the exhaust and those get flushed, flushed out. So after it detects the voltage, if it's fine, it won't cycle anymore. You only get one cycle. And then if it's improper, whether it be high or low, it'll cycle three, sorry, two more times for a total of three cycles and then it won't work after that. Well... If on a carved model, chances are it's the servo motor. Now, I don't know if it could be anything like a bad ground to that or what the situation scenario is, but that's something that you'll have to pretty much just test and tune. You have to get one known working servo motor and put it on there see if it works. Now, if you have an EFI model, the EFI model actually the servo motor will go through the same process, but it detects its, I'm sorry, it gets its voltage supply from the lighting coil on the stator. So if your servo motor is not working and you don't have any lights, chances are it's your lighting coil. But if your servo is not working, you got lights, EFI model, then it could either be the servo or once again, like I said, I don't know if it has, you know, it could be some grounding problem, um, but that would probably affect your lights as well, maybe. So uh, definitely something you want to look into either way um, to figure it out and know for sure. A lot of people just block them off. I mean, if they're working right, they, you know, if you got, if you take care of them, they're great. Now, the reason that the EFI models will draw voltage from the lighting coil is because the ECU, the electronic control unit, also needs voltage. So it's just to maintain stable voltage and it's not overdrawing from uh, the system as far as voltage goes. So, all right guys, that's it. Uh, just wanted to sh get that done for you so you guys can see the process. Um, hopefully this helped some of you guys out and um, you know you get a good idea of how a good idea of how it's uh, you know supposed to be done and how to adjust the cables and stuff it's fairly simple if you guys aren't subscribed please subscribe and uh, hit the alert bell that way you're notified of future uploads of uh, snowmobile series I got all kinds of stuff you know if you guys are interested and drop in and say hi uh, leave a comment and if you know anybody else that's interested in this type of stuff uh, please feel free to share on social media with family and friends all right guys we'll see you in the next video Thanks a lot. Come on back. God bless you guys. All right, guys. We got everything uh, in it. Ready to go. Buttoned up. We're going to see if we can get her to fire up.
All right, well, she starts. We're gonna we're gonna wait till we can get it outside. so far so that is good so we will be back when we have it 